We're going to dig a little deeper now into capacitors and dielectrics. Dielectric is nothing more than a fancy name for an insulator. And capacitors are in uh, pretty much any electronic device you want to pull up, uh, your computer, your iPad, got tons, thousands, millions of, di of capacitors in some devices. Uh, either as physical capacitors or as part of integrated circuit chips that, that build in the capacitors into the chips. So this is a demonstration of uh, various capacitors. These are capacitors. What's the basic idea for a capacitor? Is just two metal plates, charge one positively, the other one negatively, and you have an electric field that goes between them. And you can store energy in the charge on the plates. Alternatively, you can think about the energy being stored in the electric field between the plates. Uh, different forms of, um, of capacitors. The, this is a cylindrical shaped capacitor. Here are the two leads, uh, one that leads to, to one conductor and the other one to the other. In the guts of uh, these types of cylindrical capacitors, uh, this one's been cut open. And here's one of the leads. I'm not sure where the other one comes in. But um, you make a sandwich. In order to increase the area of the capacitor, you want to get as much area in the, in the plates as possible in order to store as much charge as possible. So what they do with these is it's a, it's a sandwich of layers of a conductor. Here's a conductor. And here's an insulating layer to separate the conducting layers. And then here's another conducting layer, et cetera. And so in a very small space, if you want to fit this in into your computer um, box, you can fit a lot of area and store a lot of charge in these cylindrical capacitors. Here's a little bigger one. This one, um, I think I saw, was a 100 microfarad capacitor. Um, these are smaller capacitors. Um, this one's uh, cut open. And you can see the metal layer here, maybe possibly from the camera. And you need two metal plates. It's difficult to see both of them, but metal plates separated by an, by an insulator. Uh, this is uh, what's known as a variable capacitor. In this position, so there's a knob that helps you determine how much capacitance you have. In this particular position, these plates, which hold, say, a positive charge, are not overlapping with these other plates here that have negative charge. Here they're partially overlapping, and here they're fully overlapping. And um, so here you get the maximum possible capacitance, and here you get zero capacitance. That's a variable capacitor. These are in your computer. Every piece of electronic equipment that, um, that you have, you, if you break open the box, you'll find capacitors. Um, they're either li like this, or the capacitors can also be built into chips, uh, millions of capacitors inside of the, of the chip that controls your computer or your, your iPad. That's capacitors. OK, a second demonstration of the Leiden jar. This is a Leiden jar, L-E-Y-D-E-N. It's a cylindrical capacitor made of an outer conductor, an insulator, and an inner conductor. So this inner conductor will be charged negatively, say. Then uh, we have the insulator here and the outer conductor charged positively, say. Uh, it's similar to the, the other cylindrical capacitors we looked at, but this is one that uh, Benjamin Franklin played with. Okay, let's define capacitance. 
got four concepts in this section of the textbook. Um, fun, fairly practical, well, very practical portion of this uh, discussion. A parallel plate capacitor, as discussed in the demo videos, consists of two metal plates, one carrying charge plus Q and the other char carrying charge minus Q. So uh, an opposite charge. So you got a plus Q and a minus Q. And the, the capacitance is defined as the charge on the positive plate. And that's a Q right here. And let's see if I can get those uh, guys to move. Maybe not. So the charge on the positive plate is Q. V is the potential difference between the plates. So this is an electric potential difference. We would have normally written that as delta V, a change in potential or a potential difference. But the standard, um, the, the convention is to just use V to denote that potential difference. But we all always remember that it's a difference. And then finally, the capacitance C is the, um, it's measured in units of, uh, charge is measured in coulombs. Uh, electric potential difference is measured in volts. So that's a coulomb per volt equals what's known as a farad. Capacitances are measured in farads. To increase the capacitance, it's common to fill the region between capacitor plates with an electrically insulating substance that's called a dielectric. So uh, we're going to first define the dielectric constant. And to do that, we need to first understand what happens when you insert that dielectric into the space between the two capacitor plates. So here's the negatively charged plate. Here's the positively charged plate. And um, this is, and it has an electric field, E naught, with no dielectric in place. Now, um, air is very, very close to uh, having a, being the same as having no dielectric in place. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So this is the, the electric field that would exist, and this is exactly what we've talked about in the last two chapters, with the electric field that goes from the positive to the negative. And now we insert an insulating material in here. Remember, this is not conducting. And so what happens? If we look at uh, this, is this tan colored uh, insert here, is supposed to represent a piece of uh, plastic, is a great, or ceramic, is another, um, Di dielectric material that are used in, um, in capacitors. So if we look at a particular atom, that atom has a positive nucleus and electrons that go around the outside. The nucleus is stuck in space. It can't move. Uh, but the electrons have some flexibility to, to move their positions. So what happens to those electrons? Well, when confronted with these negative charges here, the electrons in the atom are going to get repelled by those negative charges. And so they're going to spend more time on the right side of the, of the nuclei than they do on the left side, which, which it's called polarization. It polarizes the material. Same thing over here. The electrons uh, in this atom will get attracted toward the positive plate. Well, what does that do? That leads to a positive amount of charge along the surface here and a negative amount of charge along this surface. Well, if you think about that charge itself creating its own electric field, what would the direction of that induced electric field be? Well, electric fields always start on positive and on negative, so the induced electric field would be to the right, whereas the applied electric field, this E naught right here, is to the left. What that does, what this induced electric field, when added to the 
the applied electric field is that it cancels out some of the electric field in the interior of that dielectric. So, so this electric field here in the interior is weaker than it would have been outside. And we call it E, we call this E naught. So E is going to be less, the magnitude of this electric field inside the dielectric is going to be less than the magnitude of the electric field with no dielectric present. So that's what these things mean here. E is the, um, E naught is the electric field with no dielectric present. It's measured in volts per meter. And then E is the reduced electric field. So it's going to be less. E is going to be less than E naught. And the dielectric constant is defined as the ratio of these two. So the original electric field divided by the reduced electric field, which is less. So this number, this ratio, is going to be bigger than 1. <coughs> because the E is less than E naught. It's reduced. Uh, we talked about the, well, let me just state it. The, the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is this. You say, well, that's a lot to, a lot to digest. We'll, t we'll say a little bit more about this later, but it's the dielectric constant <coughs> times epsilon naught. What's epsilon naught? It's the electric permittivity. I promised you we'd be using that, and here's a, a case where we, will, where we do use it. The area of the capacitor, that is the, <coughs> that's the area of one of the plates and then divided by D, the distance between the plates. So what does this mean? If you increase the dielectric constant, this dielectric constant kappa, that's a Greek letter kappa, by the way, if you put a better dielectric inside of that capacitor, you get more capacitance. You can hold more charge. Uh, epsilon naught is not negotiable, it's just a constant. If you increase the area of the capacitor, like we talked about the, in the demo video, the more area, the greater amount of charge that it will hold. And if you decrease the distance between the plates, if D gets smaller here, then you increase the capacitance. So the better capacitors have those two plates really close to each other. And there's as big a possible area as possible. Um, as big an area as possible. Just reminding you though that the capacitance is proportional to the charge stored by the capacitor. The higher the capacitor, the higher the capacitance in farads, the more charge that it can store. Here's a derivation of the capacitance of that parallel plate capacitor. Um, here's the definition. We just uh, defined that concept. C is Q over V. Um, epsilon naught is the concept we covered in chapter um, 18. Q over epsilon naught A. That's sigma divided by epsilon naught. And we, we talked about this particular concept, the electric field near a a um, surface uh, near a plate with charge Q in area A. Um, also a concept uh, from earlier in this chapter, E is delta V divided by delta S. We're calling delta V V now, so it, remembering that it's a potential difference, and then the distance between the capacitor plates is the, is the displacement that we're going through. So that's V over D, then we, we put it all together, let's see, the kappa is epsilon naught over E, so now we're going to actually uh, derive that capacitance. So from this equation we get that Q 
is epsilon naught A E naught. So I've just solved this equation for Q, epsilon naught A times E naught. And I'm going to plug that into here. I'm also going to solve this one for V. V is E times D. So I've solved this equation for V by multiplying both sides by D. I'm going to put that in here and see what we get. C now becomes epsilon naught A E0 divided by E times D. And then we use this fact that kappa is defined as E0 divided by E. Well, here's my E0 divided by E. That gives us epsilon naught A kappa over D. And that is this. Kappa epsilon naught A divided by D. Kappa epsilon naught A divided by D. That's the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. If you'd like to memorize this derivation, you're certainly welcome to. It just um, um, combines the various concepts. But I wanted you to see where it all comes from. Here's some dielectric constants of some common substances. The dielectric constant kappa for vacuum. What does vacuum mean? Is it the thing you uh, vacuum your carpet with? No, it's, um, it's just free space with nothing in it. And that makes sense that kappa should be 1 for free space because there's nothing there. There's no insulator there. <clears throat> you can get a close approximation to a vacuum uh, here on Earth in, in what's known as ultra-high vacuum, where you evacuate the air from a space. And um, we had a, a lab at West Virginia where uh, a door on, on the front of the lab to the ultra-high vacuum said, in ultra-high vacuum, no one can hear you scream. It's because sound does not propagate in, in a vacuum. Um, air has a dielectric constant that's very, very close to that of a vacuum. So those small amount of mo molecules in the air don't really um, make much of a difference. And it's just a tiny, tiny percent different. You see, you might as well just treat air as if it were a vacuum as far as the dielectric constant is concerned. Um, some other dielectric constants. Um, mica is used for some capacitors, has a dielectric constant of 